Hi guys, very good afternoon to you. Uh, this is Ajay, and uh, I'm going to actually talk about today. Um, there is actually puzzle. There is a, there is a kind of requirement. Uh, you know, uh, my subscriber actually has uh, emailed me, and he has uh, some problem with the V to cup, and I'm going to actually discuss that. And uh, indeed, it's actually a very great, uh, going to be a very great video because today you are going to learn that how to overcome the repetition issue in the V to cup, right? So this is the video number 253, and for those who are watching the channel for the first time, I I must tell you that we have already uploaded 253 252 actually amazing videos on excel excel vba access and access vba just go to the playlist and find out all these videos here we have the different different categories here as you scroll it down and uh, i'm sure whatever you're looking forward to you can you will find the you know that category over here right so these are all the playlists I have created and it's a mixture of basic intermediate and advanced level of the videos right okay so i actually received this uh, the email uh, two days back from the Steve uh, and he says that I follow your channel and it has enhanced my knowledge so much I can now make programs in VBA well thumbs up to you I am very really really very happy uh, because uh, I haven't actually got any email as of now from somebody you know who actually have written this that they have learned the VBA from watching my channel <laughs> or to be very honest you know so thank you so much it's it's really amazing to know that thank you so much for starting the VBA introduction series on loops and if yes I have started it because I got a lot of emails from you that you really want to have a look on the basic part as well because I have covered almost all the advanced level videos on my you know the VBA except VBA or access VBA so a lot of you have requested in the past that you also want to have the the knowledge from the very scratch so uh, I have watched all this is my first email to you and I hope it will be addressed I'm working on office data and it has two columns where I have a ticket number and ticket raised here my problem is that the ticket numbers are repeated and sometimes I'm in the requirement where I receive the ticket numbers raised in the last month or so and I need to give the years all years where it is raised I learned VLOOKUP watching your all the VLOOKUP videos but somehow I'm stuck in this because VLOOKUP never works on repetition absolutely your guidance on this will be very much required and appreciated please upload the video on the same well thank you so much for writing and guys um, just a quick reference if you if you're looking for the VB introduction videos then just go there and watch out these videos step by step and then we have the videos I mean on everything we have the Excel VBA collection loops uh, we have the access VBA as well so every you will find all the videos here advanced as well as the basic videos right and uh, I have also a series on, on the VLOOKUP which is this I think this is what exactly Steve was referring to uh, Excel VLOOKUP and match this this is a simple pure VLOOKUP knowledge starting from the scratch you have a different different videos over here so you can see that these are all the videos which are you know kind of the mixture right so you can start from the very basic like for example watch video number 205 complete VLOOKUP and match discussion right so here if you, if you don't have any idea about the VLOOKUP or you know very little about the VLOOKUP just go there and check this video out and then you can watch the rest of the videos right so based on what you have uh, said uh, see so you have a prepared a kind of a data where you said that there are some transaction IDs so I have gathered here guys some transaction IDs you can see here and then I have got some engineer names also right so you have talked about the year but you can I mean write the year as well it hardly makes any difference so what actually I have done here is uh, let's say um, some engineers are getting the calls in the call center and they are raising the ticket numbers and then ticket numbers again re-raised so we have a repetition for example look at this 9845 it is coming here it is coming here and it is coming here then there is another ticket let's say it is 9846 it is coming here and then you know so basically the transaction IDs are repeating but the engineer names they can or they cannot be repeated like in this case we have the first uh, engineer which attended which raised this ticket number is you know Ram Gopal and then the next the same ticket was re raised by maybe another person Akshitra and then again you know we have some more people coming here so what exactly he is looking and what exactly we are going to discuss in this so if you have this kind of a situation guys that you have the transaction IDs here and you are asked to provide the who all engineers or you know whatever it doesn't really matter I'm just giving you the dummy data so in this video we uh, as per this database we are going to check that who all engineers have actually attended these transaction IDs so let's say you have been given the email by the client and they emailed you this transaction number and now you want to check that who all engineer how many engineers actually have attended this transaction you know that could be the case I mean it can come right or I can add some more uh, you know let's say I added one more this is one more and let me just repeat this again here let me copy this and let me paste it here now you have a one transaction ID which is coming three times and there's another one which is only coming once right so what we want to do 
In this case, we want to find it out using the main database where you have thousands of transaction IDs, though I have written here only the 10 IDs, but you know, the concept remains same. Now, when you use the VLOOKUP, because obviously you need to look up the engineer name, so I think the best option would be to use the VLOOKUP because it's a lookup function. It's a part of, it's a part of a, you know, lookup family. So this is how you use the VLOOKUP, right? I assume that you know the VLOOKUP and in case if you don't know the VLOOKUP, then I told you where to go and watch out all the videos, right? So I select this and this is how we give the data. I selected this data and I say that go to the second column and the zero number, right? Now we got the Ram Gopal, which is correct. And I'm going to freeze the table as well. Now, so far, so good. See, you know, things are looking fine. If I drag this formula, I get the ticket, you know, for the race for this, this engineer, which is, um, who is Nidhi actually. But the next, you know, the ID, which should be Akshitra, you can see that 845, it should have captured actually Akshitra. And this is what exactly we are looking forward. But this is not coming as you can see, right? Because, you know, the VLOOKUP has a limitation. If, if you have a repetition, okay in your database in your lookup values then we look up does not work correct okay because you see we look up always picks the first value so when you said that pick up this look up this value in this table the vlookup will capture this and will not go further it will stop its search then and there and that is the reason you know you see this ticket number coming here three times and all of the times we have the same engineer and that is what we never wanted to do that right so in this case you can make these things unique guys we have to do one thing we have to you can use the counting function here this is going to be wonderful i mean it, it's actually a very good question i'm not sure if i uploaded this video you know in uh, previously but i'm wondering that why i haven't actually uploaded the video if uh, you know that this is i didn't actually upload this i don't remember but anyways because you asked me so i'm going to actually upload this video again because i have some idea like i have talked about this in some video but nevertheless uh, we are going to talk about this and we are going to uh, I, i'm going to tell you that what exactly the technique i'm going to use here now see we are going to count these functions one by one right so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the count if function here if you don't have any idea about the count if function then please go ahead and find out here there is a video uh, you can go to the playlist and in the playlist here we have talked about the count functions let me just scroll it down and i'll show you because there also i have discussed everything in the from the very basic level and the video name is excel count and some family i believe um yeah that's the one guys just click on this and uh, yeah so you can see that count if and count ifs so first you watch what video 180 then you can watch vid video number 282 it's again amazing video it's on the wild characters how you use the star and the question mark in the count if functions after you watch these videos i'm sure you will not have any question left you know uh, in understanding this count if and count if then you can come back and watch this but i'm still going to tell you i assume that you know the count if function so this is what we are going to do i'm going to use this count if here in this range and then i'm going to count this so you know if you know the count if function what will happen this a2 is going to be counted in this entire table so i will get the answer as three uh, all right so it's coming five times one two three and then four and then five absolutely now the idea is many of you you know would use this count if like most of the time we freeze the total table like this and if you're going to drag this table what will happen you will get the same answer for this ticket number for this particular ticket number as you can see you got here five you got here five you got here five and similarly for the another ticket which is 9846 you're getting here too you're getting here too and you're getting here too and why we're getting two because it's very simple if you if you select this cell and press f2 you see that this cell this particular cell which is a7 is going to be counted in this table so obviously it will give you the same result right so in this way you cannot make these transaction ids unique right so what you do instead of making this freezing the table look at this wonderful tip now i'm simply going to remove the dollar from this part right 
this is the best example of the cell referencing use of the dollar sign right in case if you don't have any idea about the dollar signs please go ahead and watch the playlist my excel mis demo videos there there are two long videos of 30 40 minutes uh, which talks about cell reference part one cell reference part two you will understand that what i'm talking about right it has a complete complete discussion on the dollar sign but this is a very basic part anybody who works on the excel is supposed to know this because if you don't know the referencing part use of dollar then you really will have a lot of lot of challenge in using the formulas you really can't make your formulas dynamic right so now what i'm going to do you see that i have not freeze the a2 part so as a result of this what will happen when you drag this formula down a2 will change to a3 and a2 is going to be missed in the calculation so then in that way you will have the unique numbers getting generated here look at this guys do you see that now you're this number let me just give the yellow this is the number this is the number this is a number you can see that it has generated the unique numbers now no way you see five 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 right you see that the first it says five and then it says four and then it is three and then two and one let me explain you what happened now you see when you select this table when you press f2 this is the complete table and in this table this item is via you know transaction id is being calculated and because this is a full range so obviously it is going to count everything in the entire table including this table including this cell which is a2 but the next time because we have already counted the a2 table a2 cell in this table we will like to you know skip that so that is why when you come here you see that table is changing now this is your table it has skipped the upper part a2 cell right it is missing the a2 part and because of which this cell is never going to be counted so when you reach here you see that your table starts from here this is your table now so in this table you have this cell being calculated so all the upper portion if if this value is coming in the above table it is not going to be calculated why because it we have already calculated that in the upper cells right and similarly for this transaction id you see that 9846 it's coming to and the next id is here which is coming one and similarly for 847 it is coming here as two and then it is coming here one right so just in case if i copy this and paste everywhere you see that you will get this kind of a sequence isn't it amazing it says nine eight seven you know every, because you see your selection is moving right now your table is this then in the downward direction your table is this now your table is this so ultimately the values which are already calculated in the above cell we are excluding that and this is how it is going to give you the you know the unique numbers right so let me just undo it so now once you have these numbers then you can do you know you can insert the column here and you can make them unique so i'm just going to join this using the and operator with this number and now what happens when you double click on this and you drag this your transaction numbers will become unique as you can see here right or you can also do one thing you can create the hyphen with this just to you know give it a better look look at this guys now all the numbers are unique this number 845 this is not now 845 or we look up this is 845 hatch 6 and similarly this number is 845 hash 5 and this number is 845 hash 4 right so the same concept you need to bring here because VLOOKUP always works you know on this concept that whatever you're looking in the main database you know both the values should look like same so here also we will have to generate the numbers right so here i'm going to simply use the again the countif function countif and then i give this table and then this table what i want to count whatever the value i have here which is in the h5 okay so now i'm going to freeze the end part of this keeping my h5 open so you will have again the numbers here right so because i have got here c9845 only three times so i'm getting here three and two and one so that means you will get only three values right so if you have a list for the list let me just drag it let's say you have some more list here so what you can do is you can just drag this table now this table is going to be um it's i mean we're going to change this h8 to h10 there we go and now you will drag this copy this and paste this and you see that numbers are generated the unique numbers are generated right so 
The next step would be to concatenate this in the same way as you concatenated the column A because we lookup works on this principle as I said that the lookup values should look like you know they, they should be absolutely the same. So we have used this kind of a formatting we inserted the hyphen and the number now just drag it and now you know what you need to do okay so now here I can I'm going to delete this and I'm simply going to use the VLOOKUP instead of this value now because this value doesn't make any sense because if you are going to find this value in the table A to C it will not be there because you have now unique numbers so obviously you will have to use this so now F5 is going to be looked up in this table I, I start my table from the A because lookup value should be the leftmost column I have told this I have discussed all these the VLOOKUP limitations and the rules in the, that you know VLOOKUP and match video which I was talking about earlier guys so go ahead and watch that so now the column number will be three because I'm looking for the engineers and the exact match is zero, right? There we go. And I'm going to freeze the table entirely because this time we are using the VLOOKUP and then the VLOOKUP the table should freeze properly. I just drag this now and let's see the result. Look at this guys, this is wonderful. Now you have the ticket number and you have got all the engineers. So Smith, you can use this kind of a technique. Next time when they send you, you know, uh, transaction IDs and they ask you that, you know, these are the, these, this trans transaction ID let's say coming 10 times and they want to check that 10 times who attended it or whatever in, in which year this transaction was raised as you asked me you can do this very easily right you just need to use the count so smartly and it, it is going to generate the unique numbers and then you just need to join them with the transaction ID so that the VLOOKUP can work right and you can I mean if, if you want to send this file to somebody then please hide everything you can hide this because we don't want to show them right so you can hide this or maybe you can do one thing guys you can just give it a white font like this right so nobody will be able to see that and then you can also give it a white font look at this guys this is really amazing right so if you change anything here for example I'm going to copy this that 4-6 ID and I'm going to paste it here let's see what happens now look at this the answer so it says that now 846 is giving you the NA and the next 846 is giving you Donna so we have to see why we're getting the error so obviously error is because 846 is not coming two times here you can see in the main database it's just coming once right so we need to that's a very good point I have actually raised here uh, because you know errors are not looking good so we can use the if error so we simply say that if the error comes then you can just simply write here the space like this okay or whatever you want to say not available or whatsoever right we have the videos on the error handling as well just go ahead and watch the videos on the uh, my free online MIS videos there we have talked about VLOOKUP plus if error right it's I think 45 minutes of a long video right so you can watch that if you don't have any idea what the if error is if error means that the if, if if the error comes then what we would like to do now you have a perfect example here so now if I copy this and paste everywhere you see that the blanks would come here like this Wow, it is looking amazing, right? You see that? It's showing the only the donor, and this is what exactly you wanted, right? Anyways, I and now I paste this this value as well here. Let's see, we get the value here. All oh, right, we got the value, and I'm gonna paste this again. You got the value here again, and I'm gonna paste this again. And now you see that there's nothing coming, right? Because we have got only eight four seven, uh, you know, ticket raised by only two engineers, right? So in this way guys, this looks wonderful and this is how you can actually build up the formula. So I hope you like this video and you can also, you know, this video is also very important from the interview perspective. Who knows, if you are appearing for the Excel advanced level test, you know, they can definitely shoot up this question to you, right? So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe and watch all those amazing 253, 50, 54 videos. All videos are yours and let me know in case if I can be of any help. Thank you so much guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.